To Cardiff Town Hall to receive the freedom of the city comes Princess Elizabeth, wearing the ensemble that recently met with Parisian approval. Conferring the freedom of their city for the first time upon a woman, the people of Cardiff honor all the women of Britain for the role they play in present day affairs. In accepting the freedom as laid down by the traditional swearing in, the heiress to the throne acknowledges her duty to the city, respect for its mayor, and in the words of the town clerk, I shall also I shall also be civil and obedient be civil and obedient to the alderman of the same to the alderman of the same <laughs> and also I shall and also I shall as much as in my power lies as much as in my power lies contribute contribute and do and do every act and thing every act and thing for the good government for the good government and safety of the city and safety of the city and the inhabitants thereof and the inhabitants thereof so help me god so help me god britain's boxing miners come to town from a thousand entrants 16 fight their way to wembley for the national coal board championships in the lightweight class ronnie latham in white socks meets roy cook from wales what they lack in skill and finesse they make up for in energy and clean honest boxing Latham, a former schoolboy champion, is a clear points winner. Fuel Minister Hugh Gateskill is among the 10,000 crowd watching the heavyweight clash between Scotland's David Dunsmuir and Eddie Phillips, a West Indian working in South Wales. From the same Ronda pits came Tommy Farr, Britain's most gallant heavyweight. From amateur contests like these may come the successors to the boy from Tony Pandy, who will give British boxing badly needed new blood. Punishing blows put Phillips down, and this young colliery worker's dream of following Tommy Farr is cut short. Dunsmuir's win makes Scotland's miners the champions, leaving Wales as runners-up. <laughs>